Amen. We thank God for those that press their way to be on tonight. This is Cornerstone Deliverance Church. This is our fifth Bible study on our pastors and our leaders. Um, hallelujah, Jesus. Our website is www.cornerstonedeliveriesechurch.com. We invite you to peruse it. It will be a blessing unto you and to download the church app that is free, no charge to you in your Google Play Store and Apple Store to stay connected to what it is that the Holy Spirit is releasing, amen, in this season, amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah, amen. Jesus. Sister Frances, I'm going to ask that you open us up in prayer for the Bible study tonight. Hallelujah. Father God, once again, we come before you this very night, O oh God, giving you praise, honor, and glory. For this is the day that you have made, O oh God, and we are rejoicing and we're glad in it. Father, Hallelujah. go forth in your word tonight, O oh God. Heavenly Father, you will continue to have your way in each and every one of us, Father God. Heavenly Father, that's connected to Cornerstone Deliverance Church, O oh God. Heavenly Father, we lift up Apostle Asia Heard tonight, God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word down on the inside of her, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father God, as she begins to feed us, O oh King. Heavenly Father, let the word come forth like fire, O oh God. Heavenly Father, let it be embedded into our hearts tonight, O oh God. Heavenly Father, we will be the givers of the word, O oh King. But, Father God, that we will walk it out, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We praise you for all that we've said and done tonight, O oh God. Heavenly Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for that heartfelt, hearty prayer on tonight. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Giving God all the glory. Beloved, we are studying our pastors and our leaders this is, oh, Lord, I thank you, our fifth session. Amen. This is our fifth session on this lesson. Amen. And we want to get through it to the end. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to start at, we're going to start at, hallelujah, to oversee and protect the flock. Amen. That the job Amen. of the ministry, the ministry who is the leaders that God has set in place to teach, to exhort, to edify, to protect, amen, the flock. The flock is the saint, amen, the sheep of God pasture, and it is his pasture that you're in. The pasture don't belong to me, amen, as a leader. The pasture is God. I, too, am his flock in his pasture, amen, amen. but in the place of leadership, amen, hallelujah. I amen. need this word like you need it. Amen. I need the living amen. water like you need it. I need to amen. eat that you can eat like you need it. Amen. I need amen. prayer just like you need it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not giving you nothing that God did not give me. And I have to go get it in order to release it. Amen. 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 So we're going to read the portion in this lesson where it says to oversee and protect the flock. And I asked someone put, to pull up Acts 20, verse 28, if you have it. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Yeah. Anyone that have it can read it. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Spirit has made you overseer, to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. So the church belongs to God, and he's, he's, he's making it quite clear here, amen, that he amen. purchased with his blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. That blood was shed at Calvary, amen, amen. and he's calling us his very own. I'm, I'm, I'm a part of his flock. Amen. Mm -hmm. And Amen. he's telling the leader to take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. This is a warning. Take heed. Amen. We have to Amen. make sure that we protect them, that we guard them, that we watch over them, and we have to make sure that we feed them. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. You're not going to be starving at CSDC. Now, you know, amen, under the civil law, amen, if you starve a child, amen, hallelujah, amen, they are coming for you. That's called child, children endangerment, amen. That means amen. that you are derelict in your duties. So as leaders, amen, in the kingdom of God, we don't want to be derelict in our duties. We want to make sure that your diet, amen, the, the, the food that you eat is sound doctrine, amen, and, and, and is, and is um, seasoned well with salt. Amen, that Jesus is the flavor. Amen, we want to make sure that he is the flavor. Amen, that the word that we, that we teach is him. We want to be mindful of these things. Amen, hallelujah. We don't want to Amen. give you nothing that God is not saying. For Jesus said to his disciples, to God, when he prayed that I have given them everything that you have given me, I have told them, hallelujah, Jesus. And this is how we want to be. Amen. The fivefold ministry warns the church of potential dangers and spiritual pitfalls that await to trap and and ensnare unwary Christians. I believe that we read this, but we're going to go over it again. Amen. Uh And so this is why we have to keep our ear to his voice, have to be in prayer. We cannot be busy. The leaders shouldn't be busy um, doing other things. Amen. We really have to give time to God, amen, because if you're not spending time with him to get a revelation, you cannot warn, amen, hallelujah. It says sometimes, yes, you you have to be able to do this thing. And those of you that are gearing toward leadership, it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. You have to take out time to play with the people of God. You have to have your ear to voice, to, to God's voice, that he will show you who's in need of prayer and what is going on with each of your flock. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes people will come back and say, Apostle such and such and such and such, you're not telling me nothing that I don't already see, but the eyes of the shepherd, amen, and the compassion of the shepherd towards the sheep may be different. Amen. Because the shepherd has to have the heart of God. Hallelujah, Amen. Jesus. Have Amen. to have the heart of God, the heart to teach, the heart to forgive, the heart to love. And even after you correct, the heart to be able to move past that and love on you some more. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes members of the flock view regulations and boundaries as infringements upon their personal freedom Amen. rather than protection from personal uh-huh. destruction, amen? And so amen. we want to know that I'm not in your business, but God is in your business, amen? And that when amen. you reject the instruction or the correction, that you're not rejecting me, that you're actually rejecting God. And we saw in the word of God where um, the children of Israel did not want a king anymore, amen? They did not want Samuel as they judge anymore, so they was asking God for a king. And Samuel felt rejected. And God said to Samuel, why are you mad? Because they didn't reject you. They rejected me. And so as leaders, we have to make sure that we put our feelings and our emotions in the right place. Because if you're truly in representation of God and what it is that you're giving them pertaining to the correction or the edification or the exhortation to teach, if it is the word of God, and if it's rejected, amen, it's not geared at you. Hallelujah. And we amen. have to teach this, amen, we have to teach this that it is a, a reverence for God and his word, amen, amongst the congregation, amongst the flock, amen? Amen. So yeah. we must learn to think of the shepherd as a protection to keep out grievous wolves rather than as a stockade that hinders us from enjoying greener pastures. Amen. Amen. No, it's not really greener on the other side. And if you water where you are, if you put your time in where you are, if you show up at the services where you are, it'll be green too. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what we tell people when they marry. Don't be going over there looking over at nobody else's fence and nobody else's yard. Amen. Because yes, it's right. the time out that you took to pay attention over there. If you would have paid attention to where you at, yours could be green too. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Does do anyone have any questions so far? I like what God you has. Said. Go ahead, woman of God, Sister Francis. I like what you said about how a lot of times, you know, the people view, the saints view 
um, the shepherds, when they rebuke them or have guidelines and things, structure in the house of God as an infringement upon their own personal lives and not viewing it as protecting. And I just had that conversation with a sister on my job because Amen. I, used to, I used to look at it with the sister. She used to tell me she goes to a pastor, she, and she's an elder in her church, but she knew that hmm. growing up from her mother. Her mother was a pastor. She goes nowhere without telling the pastor. She said, Pastor, I'm going so-and-so. This is the pastor. This is the so-and-so. Is it okay for me to go? And I've never had that in all the times that I've been in church because I've never had hmm. a connection with leadership like that where they, you know, they were watching over you and, and that close enough to, you know, advise you on where to go and where not to go. So Amen. Um, I laughed about it when I came to see these uh, to um, Cornerstone, and, um, and I told her today, I said, well, you know, my past is the same way. We have to report to her, and I don't feel no way about it. It's all right because I view it, just like you said, as protection. You know what I mean? Amen. Amen. Over our souls. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad that the Holy Spirit allowed Sister Frances to share that revelation. Amen. Because this thing is real. Either you belong to him or you don't. And if we do, we're going to follow the guidelines that he has set in place. And then sometimes our feelings and our own emotions, we have to check them. Because, listen, our feelings will deceive us. Your natural senses will deceive you. Amen. Mm-hmm. So when correction come or that submission that you have to do or accountability come, the time that you want to go and be someplace else or go someplace else or travel, amen, listen, you want to be in tune with, your, with God and your shepherd. Amen. First of all, mm-hmm. I want to know that you sought God to make sure that where you're going that you are supposed to be because sometimes you will never get to me to ask me because God would already tell you, no, I don't want you there. Hallelujah, Jesus. And if you Amen. happen to miss what God is saying, we're going to catch it. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to catch it for you. Amen. And we're going to be just... in agreement. We're going to be Amen. in agreement with Amen. one accord. Amen. With the spirit. Amen. Sister Amen. Francis, you have something else to share? Yes. yes. Just one more thing. I had to go uh, to court today about uh, a ticket, which was frivolous. Thank God. God gave me the victory. They threw it out. Um, but, Thank what God. Was, they were, we were online getting ready to go into the courtroom. And the first thing, one of the things that he said, he told the men, take off your hat, your hood, you know, and so forth and so on before you enter into the courtroom. And I saw that. I said, you see, the courts have structure. You can't dress any kind of way. You can't come before the judge any kind of way. And some of them looked, and they, they, but they automatically took their hats off. And it's the same thing, and I thought about the church, how a lot of times, you know, people, you know, fight and kick up against all of the, that, the um, structure that God has set into place, whereas the world has the same thing, and we don't have no problem with it. But when we come before God, we just want to come any kind of way, just do anything. Amen. We got to realize God is a judge as well. God is a man, and he has structure. He has order. I just wanted to bring that up. I thank God for this share through Sister Francis tonight, amen, because there is order, rank, and protocol in the kingdom of God, amen. As a matter of fact, the civil order is set up directly. If you even check the civil laws, it aligns with um, a lot of it, the law of Moses, amen, that God, the law that God had given. So you find that the civil law will mirror what God has in place until they begin to veer off into their own things and doing their own thing and begin to rebel against God. But as she said, in the house of God, you couldn't walk in with your hat in as a man. Amen. Right. Women wear their hats, but a man, they tell a man, take off your hat, you in the house of God. Amen. So they, they catch them, the greeters catch them coming through the door, smiling, shaking their hands, sir. Please remove your hat. This is the house of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. With your nice smile. Amen. Yeah. And going on to greet the next one. Amen. Hallelujah. Because, listen, Amen. this is our house. And if we can't give instruction, 
if we ourselves can't give instruction or we don't we, or we need to be developed that we would know the instruction to give amen there was a time amen some places won't let you in a pulpit with pants on and some of them won't let you in your sanctuary amen with, with the amen. pants on they got wraps and they wrap you up and so we want to be mindful we do not want to come before the lord any kind of way amen hallelujah and and amen. i know that the word of god said don't rent your clothes Rent your heart, amen. I know that it is a heart thing, amen. Yes. But the same way that you, if you're going to present yourself before man properly, you ought to present yourself before your Lord and Savior properly. I'm going to share this quick testimony before we move on. When God has set me apart and he would get me up early to pray for him, a pray to him, amen. I had to, um, he prompted me to get in the shower. It was like I was going on a date. God was teaching me the same way you get jazzy for your date, I'm your mm-hmm. husband. I don't want you coming before me all crazy, sleeping your eye. I had to get up hours before prayer. I would get up, get in the shower, brush my teeth, put on my perfume, and I would make sure my hair was right because I was going. And this was, wasn't nobody around. It was just me and Jesus. But that's how he did me. Amen. It was something that I needed. It was personal between me and God. And so I was told by someone, God don't care if you just turn over and pray. I said, I believe he's teaching me something. And because I believe the Holy Spirit is teaching me something, I'm going to obey him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If I could do it, and, and, and I was meticulous going out on a date. Everything had to be in place. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we ought to be meticulous for Jesus Christ. For he is our husband. He ain't even trying to date you. He just married to you. He's in covenant with you. Amen. And so we Amen. ought to think about these things when we're representing him. Amen. Amen. So I'm glad that the woman of God shared that. And especially when we go out on speaking engagements, amen, we want to be right. Hallelujah. We don't want to be looking all, all crazy and everything. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. My mother was sharing with me when they used to go out to evangelize. Amen. Mother White used to say, don't come out with me with your sneakers on. You look like you got something and you about something and that you know the king of kings. You know, put on your nice shoes. You know, do Amen. something with yourself. Hallelujah. And so I just Amen. thank God for the teaching of the older woman. Amen. Put on your stockings. Put on that girdle so you ain't shaking like the world. Amen. They Amen. tell you these things. Because especially when we get older, if not, you know, we be all over the place up under that dress. Hallelujah, Jesus. So, yeah, you want to be, want to hold that stuff in. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Want to save it all for the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I know that we have gotten away from, from girdles and gotten away from slips and stockings, but we don't want to forget those things. Amen. We want to be covered that we don't be a stumbling block to no one else or that we don't draw the wrong attention. Amen. 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 So, Sister Francis, thank you for that. Ezekiel 3.17 says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Amen. So you see that the prophets really delivered the warning of God. It's not like it is now, the way it used to be then amongst the prophets. Amen. They came to warn the people of God of their error. Amen. And like we received in 5 a.m. prayer, hallelujah, Jesus, once I got the fullness of the message and began to, and I had to judge it with the word of God, amen, I was seeing what God was saying, hallelujah, pertaining to don't minimize the sin. You have to warn the people, amen, hallelujah. I, I prayed with a woman today, and she said she doubt. So I said, then repent. And she said, repent. I said, yeah, you said you doubt it, right? That's a sin right there. The children of Israel was walking around the wilderness for, for 40 years. Why? Because they was in doubt. They had no faith. And so we have to learn how to repent for certain things. Amen? Amen. So, beloved, Amen. he's telling Ezekiel, you are a watchman on the wall. So then the watchman really came to warn, warn you that you was in error, warn you that you was in sin, to bring edification and exhortation, whatever it is that God was speaking at that time. And so now in these days now, hallelujah, they speak in all kinds of things, and they're not speaking about spiritual things, but a lot of material things and the material blessings. And God yes. wants to speak to his people about spiritual things, not material things. God wants your spiritual to develop and mature. He wants you to prosper that way, amen, and then everything else will prosper. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, 
and everything shall be added unto you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we want to be mindful of that. Do anyone know what the kingdom of God is, who he is, according to Scripture? Anyone know? I say it all the time. Who is the kingdom of God? I don't remember. I'm going to tell you, and you're going to know it. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink. See, the the scriptures will tell you. Sometimes we don't know who the kingdom of God is. But what scriptures is, the word of God says that the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. So if, and that's Romans 14, 7 for for yourself. When the word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and everything shall be added, the kingdom of God is the Holy Spirit that come upon you. He is the kingdom, the kingdom of God for those of you that are baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. The kingdom of God is your atmosphere, and he, and he lives inside of you. Amen? And that's the joy, the peace, and the righteousness. He comes with those fruit, with that provision. Hallelujah. That even in the midst of the storm, that you're going to be okay. Amen? Amen? Amen. So this is what we're seeking. We're seeking the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost have everything that we need. He's the paracletos. Are you seeking the kingdom of God? Are you spending time with him? Is he teaching you? Is he ordering your steps? Are you living and moving and having your very being in him? Seek ye the kingdom of God. Amen? So this Amen. is for your, for, for, your, for your information. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is not meat or drink. It ain't these physical things that's going to perish. Amen? It's not Amen. those things. But it's Romans fourteen seventeen says, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's, there it is. And if anything is trying to rock your peace, you get in the spirit. Hallelujah. Anything trying to steal your joy, don't let them steal it. Amen. It's yours. Don't let nobody come in and smack you up and take it. The devil is a lie. Hallelujah. You keep Amen. your joy. Amen. And don't you give nobody a piece of your mind either. You need your whole mind. You need all of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So to feed the flock of God, God has instructed the ministry to prepare a well-balanced diet for the flock in order that it may be healthy and prosper. Amen. And so Jesus said unto Peter three times, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? He said, then feed my sheep. Amen. Hallelujah. We make sure that you get a well-balanced diet at CSDC, amen, from the Bible studies to the Sunday service, amen, to the prayer. Even when we pray, we pray in the word of God. We ain't praying nothing but the word of God. If we pray in anything and and you can't find it in the word, you ought to reject it, amen? Amen. 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 And the word of God, and it says here, for you to be healthy and to prosper. So you want to be spiritually healthy and you want to prosper spiritually. And whatever's going on in the spirit is going to manifest in the physical anyway. So let us not put the cart, the, the cart before the horse, prosper spiritually, and then watch everything else prosper. Amen? Amen. Amen. John twenty one seventeen. This is the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verse 17. Anybody got it can read it. When you get it, just say amen. Amen. I like the interaction here. Man, you're alive today. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time. Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Amen. And I love this scripture. Because mm-hmm. Jesus asked him the same question three times. Faith come by hearing and by hearing of the word of God. Jesus is the living word. Amen. And every time Peter heard him, did it increase his faith? Did it elevate? Because Jesus was talking about agape sacrificial. Do you really? Mm-hmm. And then Peter, Peter was wise when he said, you know all things. You know. Hallelujah. That's just the wisdom. I know that you know that I love you, Jesus. Amen. You know all things. And then that was a surrender. That was Peter's total surrender 
knowing that the Christ knew all things. Amen. That right there also referred to his deity again. And he said, so feed my sheep. He gave him a command, feed my sheep. And the word of God speaks about those shepherds that eat and don't feed the people, don't feed the flock. You can't eat yeah. and not feed the flock. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah, mm-hmm. Jesus. Don't you get there and get all powerful and then the day ain't growing, ain't getting nothing, ain't, ain't delivered from nothing. Oh, no. Feed the people of God. Hallelujah. So we want to make sure that you eat and that you eat well. And it's up to you to take an advantage to go back over the recorded studies, to watch the, the sermons afterward, to get into the word on your own, that you could really digest it properly and really taste and see that the Lord is good and hear what it is that he's speaking into your spirit. Sometimes when you hear it, you may get, get, get something, and then when you go back and listen to it slowly, you get the fullness of the message. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you have to do your due diligence. Amen. The average human being eats more than 21 physical meals each week, yet we sometimes expect our inner man to thrive on less than two or three spiritual meals during the same time period. Amen. And, beloved, I I love this right here. If you're eating three times a day, you ought to pick up the word of God three times a day. Amen. And even more. And even more. If if you are eating 21 physical meals during the week – or even if you're drinking, you need to, the way you eat and drink, don't feed your physical man more than you feeding your spiritual man because the spiritual is your reality. Amen? Amen. amen. God's amen. ordained ministry. Amen, beloved. This thing is real. God's ordained ministry is commissioned to prepare spiritual food, but the sheep must be present when the shepherd feeds the flock. So I could show up, Bishop could show up, but if you don't show up, amen, you ain't going to eat. You got to show up. You have to show up on the Bible studies. You got to press your way, amen. I can tell you where you spend most of your time, that's what influences and impacts you, amen. You're not being influenced and impacted by the word of God or by your leaders if you're not spending no time. Hallelujah, Jesus. If I spend more of my time at the table eating food and, I, and my cake and my ice cream and the stuff that I like, amen, listen, that's what's going to impact me. Mm-hmm. If I keep people in my ear or if I'm on the phone all day and not serving God while I'm on the phone, that's what's going to impact me. If I'm watching craziness on the TV, that's what's going to impact me. That stuff will get all in your spirit, and then you wonder when you have a little two-cent trial why you can't overcome because you didn't put nothing on the inside that could come up and speak to you. Amen. You didn't feed the spiritual man. You, you starving this. You got the spiritual man on a fast. The spiritual man don't want to fast. Amen. At least not from the things that it needs to grow. Amen. Amen. Kill the flesh and feed the spirit. Kill the flesh and feed the spirit. Kill the flesh and feed the spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen, Amen, beloved. Amen. Anyone have any questions? God's ordained ministry is commissioned to prepare spiritual food, but the sheep must be present when the shepherd feeds the flock, just as invited his disciples, um, so the fivefold ministry invites the church, come and dine. Let's go to, that's John um, 21 and 12, where we should invite them. The spirit is saying come, the bride is saying come, let those that hear it, let them also in turn tell some tell someone else to come, amen, and let them all come and drink freely, says the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's Revelation um, 22:17. If I'm not mistaken, that's one of our scriptures in greeting the um, in greeting the, the the visitors. Amen. We want them to come, come, come. The Spirit is saying, "Come." If the Spirit is in you, compelling you, you who is the bride, you ought to be telling the sinner man, "You come on." Amen. And the Amen. shepherd is telling the flock to come. Come on, come on. Come on and get this. The saints' responsibility to the ministry, even though the ministry, which is the fivefold ministry, the apostles, pastors, prophets, evangelists, and teachers, have a 
duty to the saints. The saints also have responsibility to the ministry. One of them is to show up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Each each saint has a personal responsibility to the ministry under which he or she has been placed by God. So your responsibility is unto the ministry where you have been placed by God. I tell people all the time, amen, have God sent you? Did God place you here? You ought to know, amen, have God placed you here? God will deal with you in your spirit, amen, concerning where it is that he has placed you and where God placed you. Even when things ain't going right, you don't want to get up and go away. Amen. Why? Because God placed you there. Amen. There was places that I have been that even when times got hard, I stayed and I was not leaving it until God was um, releasing me. Amen. I needed a release to go anywhere. Hallelujah. So, beloved, stay until you get your release. Amen. And your release isn't you getting mad. That's not no release. I think God is speaking to me and telling me, no, that that ain't God. That's your feeling. Hallelujah. That's mm-hmm. your feelings, amen. Get Listen, get your feelings in check, get over it, forgive, and then see what God is saying. Hallelujah. Don't let amen. your pain speak to you, beloved. Let God speak to you, amen. 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 To amen. obey and submit to the ministry as unto the Lord. One of the responsibilities of the, the saints to the ministry is to obey and submit to the ministry as unto the Lord. The ministry is what God has put in place um, for the saints, amen, and the saints is to obey and submit. Hebrews 13 and 17, Hebrews 13 and 17, we want you to see it for yourself. It says, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. And then it goes on to say a little more. What else does that scripture say? Anyone have it? Have. Hebrews thirteen seventeen. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority, because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. Amen. It ain't going to be no benefit to you if a leader is crying out to God concerning you, but they're doing it with grief. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. In the kingdom of God, obedience is always a requirement. The apostle Paul stated that obedience was proof of the believer. Amen. Proof that you belong to God. Amen. Because, listen, God is not raising up bastards. He's not raising up rebellion rebellious people, amen? If the Spirit of God is in you, he's going to grace you to submit and to surrender, amen, and to obey, amen. amen. Second, so sometimes I have to say, oh, check your spirit. Check That ain't God. I don't know what spirit that is, amen, but that spirit stinks, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians 2 and, 2 and 9, Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, somebody read it. Okay, Second Corinthians 2 and 9, it says, For to this end I also wrote that I might put you to the test, whether you are obedient in all things. Amen. Okay, hallelujah, Second Corinthians 2 and 9, For to this end also I did write that I might know the proof of you whether ye be obedient in all things. And that's the proof that the spirit is on the inside, that God is on the inside, that the fruit of of him is bearing in you on the inside. Amen. That was Saul's problem. He he was rebellious, even though his heart was changed when he came into the company of the prophets. He just went about doing his own thing. And what does the word of God says about um Rebellion. It's as a sin of witchcraft. And what does it say about stubbornness? Um, stubbornness. Um, about that. It's the same scripture. Yeah. Um, Let's pull it up, somebody. Pull it up. We want you to see this is a part of the fallen flesh. Witchcraft is a part of the fallen flesh. Amen. First Sam, you 15, 23 says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness 
is as idolatry and tariffim. Amen. So, beloved, listen. If it, sometimes we speak words over ourselves, and I had. I was raising up a young lady, and she was saying, I'm stubborn, I'm stubborn. And as soon as we got to the study, amen, the bishop, Bishop Ray Bryan, he read this scripture. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as um, idolatry, amen. And so when you're speaking this, you're speaking that this is what you are, amen. So be mindful of what you speak over yourself. If these things are working in you or through you, repent. Hallelujah, because these are the works of the flesh. These are the works of the flesh. Do you know what the works of the flesh is? Someone pull up Galatians 5. I believe Galatians 5, what is it? Is it 19? Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Let us pull it up. 5 and 19 says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, um, lewdness, um, yeah, that's 19. And then it says 20, Read 20. idolatry, idolatry, sorcery, mm-hmm. hatred, content, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, uh, revelries, what is that? Revivories. And the mm-hmm. like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the time past, for that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Mhm. Okay, and that, that that thing right there that you read, um, is competition. Beloved, what I want y'all to do is I want y'all to read the works of the flesh versus the fruit of the spirit as a homework assignment, and I want you to break down and know what those works of the flesh are. You can give scripture reference. Excuse me. You can give scripture reference to it. I believe that it's very important because you cannot step on the head of something or die to something and you don't even know what it is. And so yeah. you saw there that witchcraft was there, and God is telling you that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You know, and then it speaks of um, stubbornness being as the sin of idolatry, and idolatry is one of the works of the flesh, okay? And so before it can become demonic, amen, it is just a part of your fallen sin nature. Amen. Let, let us not give way to that. Let us not give an open door to the enemy to come in. Amen? Amen. 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 So everyone have the homework assignment. I know that people are busy, but in your own time, we're going to give you two weeks to hand it in. This way you have some time. But e- even in your daily read, begin. let that be your study pertaining to the works of the flesh versus the fruit of the spirit. Amen. Because if you, if the woman of God was continue to read, read, read on the fruit of the spirit. What does it say? Okay. But the fruit of the, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such and this is no law. Mm-hmm. I thank God for the read. And this is what, how we ought to be. Those are the fruit that only the spirit could bear in you. You can't produce that on your own. So if you have not received the Holy Ghost and fire baptism, you wouldn't have those fruits. But him living in you and you obeying him are these fruits produced in you. And against them there is no law. Amen. When you're walking in the spirit, against you walking in the spirit, there is no law. There's nothing governing you. There's not a schoolmaster like that because you are in the spirit, and the, in the spirit you are free of the law. Amen? amen. So, beloved, you, amen, you'll have the homework assignment in your daily read and your daily study in the word. Let that be it. Let it be it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so we were in Second Corinthians. The believer has a duty to be a submitted follower of those who teach scriptural truth is not telling you that you have a duty to submit to everybody, but to those that, that teach spiritual scriptural truth. So that's being able to keep the scriptures, amen, in context and, and the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hebrews 13 and 7 says, Hebrews 13 and 7, remember them which have the rule over you who have 
spoken unto you the word of God whose faith follow. Amen. And so who have spoken this word and who also obey this word. Amen. 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 Hebrew 13, 7 confirms that refusing to obey and submit to our leaders is unprofitable to us. It brings serious consequences. Amen. We don't want these consequences brought on us by God. Amen. 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 Sister Marlene, I thank you for reading those scriptures. Bless you, woman of God. Amen. Amen. Romans 2, 8. Romans 2, 8, the first one to get it, I ask that you read it. Romans 2, chapter 2, verse 8. Romans 2, 8, but unto them that are contention and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Did you get that? Anybody know what contentions is? When you're constantly fighting, you want to argue. That's right. You got to get rid of that. Got to get rid of that spirit. You got to get rid of that spirit of aggression. It says heated disagreement, disagreement, dispute, um, dispulation, argument, variance, discord. And we know that we ought not to be a sower of discord amongst the brethren, that we want to produce peace. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and yeah. sometimes you'll find that people um, that are, that are um, parents, amen, even in your natural, you know, sometimes if people are not good at being parents, they'll put one child against the other. We don't want to do that, amen. We don't want yeah. no contention. We don't want no discord. We don't want members putting members against one another. We don't want no cliques in the church. There's no posse. You know, there's the only posse is Jesus Christ, amen. And he says that we are all equal, amen, that we are unified, amen, by way of his spirit, that the only thing that is working in the body is him. So if you work in the spirit of contention, then Christ ain't working, amen. If you work in the spirit of discord, that ain't God, he ain't working. So Romans 2, 8 says, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Amen? And so that's not who you want to be. You don't, you, you don't want to come into agreement with that. So Bishop, Bishop Heard always says, check your fruit. You know, um, you, you, you don't want your fruit to rot. You know what I'm saying? And so you don't want the spirit in you to be dormant, the Holy Ghost. You don't want it dried up. Hallelujah. You don't you, you want to you don't want to complacent. Amen. You want to stir up that gift. You want to charge that gift. You want to be in the word and then you want to walk in obedience to what it is that you have read, what you have heard. Amen. 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 Ephesians 5, 6 said, let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of the disobedience. Beloved, everything that you do, the word of God says, try the spirit by the spirit. Amen. Let no, to see if the spirit be of God. And so how do you try the spirit by the spirit? The way that you try the spirit by the spirit is that you measure it to what the spirit already spoke. If it's speaking contrary to the holy scriptures that the spirit already revealed, then you know that ain't God. Amen, because the Holy Ghost is not going to contradict himself. So let no man deceive you. Apostle Paul said to the Galatian church, who bewitched you? Who, who, who gave you this false doctrine? Who told you that you had to circumcise yourself? Amen, that salvation did not come by works but by faith. You did not receive the, the, the spirit of truth by works. Amen. And so you want to be mindful that you're not led to do um, things that should that, that should not be done, amen, and um, hallelujah, and it's all right to reject it if it doesn't align with the word of God, amen, and there's a way to do that, amen. amen. Sometimes people speak things to me, and I just don't receive it. I say, sorry, I don't receive that in Jesus' name, and, or I'll pray myself and just tear it up, amen, but you got to do something. You got to act on it. Don't let it stand. Don't let it work in your life, amen. 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 The church is instructed to willingly submit to the offices of ministry and to follow and to follow and obey and obey their teaching that they might escape the wrath which is to come. Okay, so when you disobey and do not submit to leadership, you will see the wrath of God. It says so, right? And so, in order to escape that wrath, it's telling you to obey and to submit. Okay, do we get that? 
Amen. To endure correction and reproof. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I like that word endure. Hallelujah, Jesus. And the reason why I like it is because it is a command. Endure is a command. To endure means to suffer something painful, difficult, patiently. Amen. To remain in existence last. Okay, so when it says to endure, when it says to endure, correction and reproof that it, you know, anytime you're being corrected, it doesn't feel good. We know what it was to be corrected by our parents and hallelujah, even in the workforce, amen, even in school, you know what it is, hallelujah, and sometimes it doesn't feel good, but the correction of the Lord is the love of God. God chastises those that he loves. So if he's using the leader to chastise you or to correct you, if he's using his spirit to chastise you or correct you or your sister and brother in love, and I threw that love out there to chastise you or correct you. The word of God says endure correction and reproof. Amen? Amen. The saints have explicit instruction to obey the chastening and rebuke of God's ordained fivefold ministry. Hebrews 12, 5 through 11. We're about to read Hebrews 12, verses 5 through 11. It says, my son. Okay, I'm going to give you a time to get it. I hear you're turning. First one to get it can read it. What is the Hebrews what? Chapter 12, verses 5 through 11. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 through 11. Maybe we could get through this today. My God. Beloved, while you're searching, we want you to take advantage of the Cornerstone Deliverance Church Theological Institute online school. Amen. There's great studies there. Mm -hmm. Study the Bible at your own time, at your own pace. You get up at 2 o'clock in the morning, can't go to sleep, take a class. Hallelujah, Jesus. Those of you that don't know how to study, that's a good study. It's a certificate program. Amen. Hallelujah. When you complete each course, the courses are each course is about 11 lessons with about 11 self-tests, and at the end is about 80 to 100 question tests. If you pass it, I believe with a 70, you get a certificate of completion. Amen. Once you get the certificate of completion for all of Module 1, amen, you'll get, you'll get a certificate from CSCC that is generated from us with our race, still in Christian living. If you complete Module 2, 1 and 2, you get a, um, a certificate in Christian um, ministry. If you complete module one, two, and three, you get a certificate in Christian leadership. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyone have Hebrews 12, 5 through 11? Yes, I have it. Hebrews 12, 5 yeah. through 11. And it says, um, my son, do not, okay, it says, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as the son. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and, scour- and, and scourge, scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? And it, I'm sorry, but if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate. 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 Yeah, my glasses. Illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of the spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chased us as seemed best to them. But he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Amen. So the chastisement of the Lord 
yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. So in order to get the peaceable fruit of righteousness, you must endure correction and reproof. Amen. And I love where it says that the chastisement of God is the love of God. He will chastise a son, but the illegitimate son, which is the bastard, he will not. Amen. And so, hallelujah, when you are rebelling against the chastisement of God, don't take on the character of a bastard. Amen. Don't put yourself outside of him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Take the chastisement. Endure it. If you if you are um, have been set up in, in any form of leadership or you have a post and you have been set down for any reason, endure the sit down. You sat down for 30 days, 60 days, endure it. Hallelujah. Because you got to endure the chastisement. You won't sit down forever. Amen. But while you're sitting down, you're dealing with yourself, repenting, getting in order, whatever it is that was out of order. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. So do anyone have any scripture, any um, questions about this particular scripture? Because it said a lot. And um, do anyone um, have any questions or anything to add concerning this scripture, Hebrews 12, 5 through 11? Amen. We're going to move on then. Uh, before we move on, I like to ask his father of spirits and live for they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure that we might be partakers of his holiness. And we want to be partakers of his holiness, beloved. Amen. Amen. Jesus Amen. loved Simon Peter. Jesus loved Simon Peter, but he rebuked him. My God. Jesus loved Simon Peter, but he rebuked him. Someone pull up Mark 8.33, which is Mark 8.30. We want to see Jesus and his earthly ministry rebuked. Amen. And we did see before how Paul rebuked Peter. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe we read that one before. But we want to follow the example of the Christ. Amen. 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 What does it say? You said Mark eight thirty three. Yeah, Mark. Yeah. But when he had turned around and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, "Get behind me, Satan! For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men." Amen. And so this was at the time, and Peter thought that he was speaking in love, but for God it was in love. Amen? And mm-hmm. for, for, the, for the Christ it was in love. Jesus was sharing with them how he would um, suffer, you know, and he would um, be crucified. And Peter was telling him, no, not you, you know, and how he would die for him and things like that. But Jesus, the spirit that Peter spoke by, spoke against the will and the plan of God for Jesus' life for his reason for coming. And so Jesus knew that the spirit that was speaking was not God, was not God. Amen. And so Amen. what did Jesus do? He did not speak to Peter. Amen. He didn't get mad at Peter. Peter, I ain't checking you. You disrespected me. And he ain't do all of that, right? He spoke uh-huh. to the spirit. You wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness. Amen. He says, Satan, get thee behind me. He spoke to the spirit that motivated Peter to speak. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Satan is a mm-hmm. motivator. Amen. That was one of Bishop Ray Bryan books. I love that book. Satan is a motivator. He will motivate you. He will whisper to you. Amen. No, you don't want to do that. Satan wants you to do that. Amen. Hallelujah. And so you Amen. have to be able to try the spirit by the spirit and make a choice. Beloved, did you get that? Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so that shows how Jesus rebuked Peter. Amen. Jesus loved his disciples, his disciples, James and John, but he rebuked them. Let's go to Luke nine fifty five. Luke nine fifty five. Mm 
Luke 9.55, and it says, For he turned and rebuked them and said, Do you not know what manner of spirit you are of? For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's life, but to save them. And they went to another village. Amen. So that was the time, I believe, that when they wanted to call down fire on the Samaritans because they did not want Jesus, right? And so what took place? What did Jesus say? You don't know what spirit you speak by. He's speaking to his disciples. These were those that walked with Jesus. You got to be careful of what you allow to come out of your mouth. Don't be speaking in tongues one minute, speaking by the enemy one minute. Discern your own thoughts before it comes out of your mouth. Discern it. Hallelujah. You might just want to hold it back. Repent on the inside. Lord, please forgive me. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm all, I almost entertained something that was not you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, beloved, Amen. y'all want to be mindful. If the disciples that walked with Jesus spoke by the wrong spirit, amen, then you too can speak by the wrong spirit if you're not mindful. Amen. 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 I, I want to share this because I think this is important. Jesus, where in, where am I? I'm in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verse 19. The Gospel of John, chapter 21, verse 19. Jesus was strong with his rebuke, amen, but he was the Lord. Amen. Someone read John 21, 19, 19 and 20. What does it say? This spake he. As a matter of fact, read to 22. Read to 22. From 19 to 22. What does it say? This spake he, signifying but what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he had said unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeing the disciples whom Jesus loved, following him, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? 22, Jesus says unto him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. And I, what I love about these scriptures is that in 19, Jesus was telling Peter how he would die, how his death would be glory to God. Amen. And then he said to him, follow me. Amen. Don't stop following me. I'm going to tell you that you're going to die for this gospel, but follow me, right? Peter, in turn, turned and saw that disciple, which was John, amen, and wanted to know how was John going to die. What about him? And Jesus told Peter, mind your business. You see see how Jesus is talking here? If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is it to you? Mind your business, Peter. You be concerned about your life and what I'm doing with you. Don't you don't you worry about how John is going to die. I just told you how you're going to die and how it's going to bring glory to God's name. Amen? Amen. He said, if I wanted John to remain until I come, what is it of you? Amen? And then for that reason, a rumor went around saying that, you know, pertaining to John will live until Jesus come again. So let's be mindful. Amen. Don't be worried about what everybody else is doing, who's getting promoted. Let us celebrate one another. Your time soon come. Amen. Hallelujah. We judge the gift in you, the character in you, wherever it is, the Holy Spirit place you. You need to learn how to be happy with that wherever he places you. Amen. I can't be you. You can't be me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Isn't that right? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't make me tell you like Jesus. What is it to you? Uh, mind your business. Amen. And take it Amen. in love. Take it in love. That's the love of God. Someone say, Amen. that's the love of God. That's that's the love the love of God. God. Amen. That is the love of God, beloved. Amen. So there we were. Let me see where I am now. Amen. The church is commanded to despise, not chastening. The church is commanded to despise, not chastening to endure chastening, and to rejoice that it is reproof that we are beloved of God. 
So you ought to rejoice in it because it is the love of God. Amen. And so let's look at how we are not to despise chastening. Hebrews 12, 5. Someone pull it up. Read Hebrews 12, 5 through 6, because that's going to show us how we should rejoice, um, how we should despise the night and endure. Hebrews, Hebrews 12, 5 through 7. Hebrews 12, 5. And ye have forgotten. Hebrews 7. Ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Those of you that cannot take chastisement, God will not deal with you as a son. You would still be a child. Amen. Hallelujah. Possibly illegitimate, my God, and hopefully not that. Hallelujah. So he will Amen. deal with you as a son according to how you can endure chastisement. Amen. Did you all get that? Amen. 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 Revelation 3.19. Revelation 3.19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. So when chastisement comes, we ought to respond to God and repent. Amen. When Nathan brought the chastisement of the Lord to David, David didn't answer Nathan. David repented. He repented to God. David understood this thing. Whenever David was chastised, boy, David would put on sackcloth and ashes. He would sacrifice unto the Lord. Amen. He got in the face of God. He brought a whole fill one time just uh, just, just that he could um, give God an offering. Amen. The Amen. session floor. Amen. The floor, Hallelujah. Yeah. And he said that I don't want to give nothing unto the Lord that didn't cost me something. Yes. Amen. Yes. He, David said, I want to sacrifice. So, beloved, let's be mindful. Let it be your sacrifice. Amen. 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 To know them that minister, it is your duty Amen. As a saint, to know them that minister. You ought to know the heart of your shepherd. Amen. Don't let no one come and whisper anything in your ear. Amen. I'm sorry, that's not what I discern, and that's not how I know my shepherd. Amen. Get, come to know the love of God in your shepherd. Amen. Amen. First Thessalonians 5.12 says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Amen? Amen. The flock must watch the example of those who minister to them to be certain that they are following ministers of character and integrity. And so some people say, well, I'm not following you. I'm following Jesus. Well, you're following the leader as the leader followed Jesus. And if you're following who God has put in place, you're following Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Saints should be assured that those who minister to them are teaching truth and sound doctrine. Amen. So how can you be assured that those that you are following is teaching truth and sound doctrine if you yourself won't open up the book? Mm -hmm. You got to open it up, beloved. While they reading it, while they preaching it, you have to be in it, reading it too. Amen. Amen. The church must also beware of false teachers and wolves in sheep clothing who may outwardly appear to have the trappings of ministry but do not walk in full truth. They know what to say. They know when to dip. They know when to shout. They know when to fall out. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. But they're not walking in the full truth. That means they are not living what they preach. They're wolves on the inside. Amen. The heart ain't right. Y'all got to be mindful of this, the Holy Spirit in you, the gift of discernment from 1 Corinthians 12 um, will, will um, allow you to discern the difference between who is speaking when they speak and if it's God or is it not. That's how Philip, when he preached to Samaria, he knew Simon was a witch, amen. When the woman with the divination spirit, amen, spoke to 
Amen. I think that's Acts 16. Let us turn to Acts 16. I want you to see this. I did a teaching on this when the wrong spirits speak the right thing. I want us to pull that up really quick. They knew, Timothy and Paul knew that this was a demonic spirit, a spirit of divination that this woman was speaking by, but she was speaking the right thing. Amen. And so what did they do? They cast that spirit out. Amen. Amen. So let us, um, let me see where it starts at. Just bear with me one minute. I was in 16, but I don't see. Yeah. Acts 16, 14. 16. Let's, it starts at 14? Yeah. So let's go ahead and read from Acts 16. Read where is that? I'm going to go. Okay, let, let's read it. Let us read it. And it came to pass. Let I mean, 16, 16. And it came to pass as we went to pray, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which shew us unto the way of salvation. And this, and this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And he, and he came out the same hour. So, beloved, let us take a look at this. Amen. We said Satan was a motivator, right? Amen. Did we not? It says, yes. and it came to pass as we went to prayer. They was on their way to prayer. A certain damsel, a young lady, possessed. This means she was demon possessed. The spirit had control with a spirit of divination. Sometimes people don't want to hear about demon spirits and stuff like that. Why you got to talk about that? We talk about it because the Bible talk about it. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. This is why we teach it, because the Bible is talking about it. You got to eat the whole roll. So this damsel, this woman, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us. She didn't come alone. The spirit brought her, that divination spirit, that witchcraft spirit, brought her, which brought her masses much gain by soothsaying. So she was a soothsayer. Amen. I tell you, those of you that go to the tarot card reader, the soothsayer, amen, whatever it is that you're going to, the, the medium, the horoscopes, you leave that stuff alone, amen? Amen. amen? The same follow Paul and us in Christ saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God. They were the servants of the Most High God. This spirit was speaking the right thing, would show unto us the way of salvation. This is the demon speaking, amen? And this did she many days. So she followed them for many days saying this. But it says here that Paul being grieved, the spirit grieved him in his spirit, turned and said to the spirit, he didn't speak to the woman like Jesus. Did Paul speak to the what? The demon spirit, the spirit of divination. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ, to come out of her, and he came out the same hour. And then when her master saw that the hope of their gain was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. They didn't want them there. Amen. Why? Because the way that they was making money, they was prostituting the demonic gift in this woman and making money off of her soothsayer. But Apostle Paul cast the spirit out and the woman was free. Amen. So what happens when the wrong spirit speak the right thing? You cast them out. Some of us, the wrong spirit, they, they, they're giving us compliments. You better know the difference, the wrong mm. spirit trying to promise you things, speaking about money, want to make you rich because you hunger and thirsting after the things of the world. You don't want nobody to make you rich but God. If anybody asks you, what can I do for you? Is there anything you need? All you need is salvation. Once you have salvation, you got everything you need, amen? And man can't give you that. Hallelujah. Man amen. can't give you Jesus. Amen. 
So let's be yeah. mindful. Do anybody have any questions about that scripture read? Amen. If there's no questions, amen, we're going to move forward. Amen. So you ought to beware of false teachers. First John 4 and 1 says, for love, believe not every spirit. First John, this is the um, epistle of John, 4, chapter 4, verse 1, says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try, this means to examine, the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. To esteem, honor, and respect the ministry. This is what the saints ought to do, to esteem, honor, and respect the ministry. These are your duties. If you're not doing these things, then you're derelict in your duties and you're disobedient. First Timothy 5, 17 through 9, first person that get it, read it. First Timothy, one of the Pauline epistles, 5, 17 through 19. I'm sorry, 17 through 19. What does that say? First Timothy five seventeen to the nineteen. First Timothy five seventeen through nineteen. Let the elders that mm-hmm. rule well be encountered worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. 18, for the scripture says, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. 19, against an elder receives not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Did you hear that, beloved? Against an elder, against your leader, receive not an accusation but by two and three witnesses. Amen. Hallelujah. You can only speak of that which you've seen. Amen. Hallelujah. And what it is that you have heard, two or three witnesses. Amen. Says the word of God. Be mindful here. You just have people come and steam rolling up on the leaders. Amen. With all kind of accusation and things. You ought to be mindful. Take heed to the word of God. Amen. Take heed. Amen. It says that your leaders is worthy of double honor. Not single honor, but double honor. Amen? Amen. Amen. We are to honor and esteem them highly in love. We must be moving in the spirit of love as a demonstration of our appreciation of their labor. Amen? We ought to appreciate the labor of our leaders, whatever that labor is. Amen? Amen. Excuse me, First Thessalonians 5, 12 through 13 says, Know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Amen? Amen. Beloved, there is an elevated degree of respect and honor that should be bestowed upon those who minister in the word, rule well, and labor effectively in their offices of ministry. There ought to be an elevated degree of respect. Amen? And so we have to, if you don't know how to flow in that respect. The scriptures are teaching you now. Amen. There is a spirit of the fear of the Lord, Isaiah 11. Amen. Get in tune with the Holy Ghost. Get in the word. Amen. Learn how you ought to honor your leader that you don't be out of pocket. Amen. Amen. Out of pocket meaning out of order. Amen. We must be careful not to gossip, slander, or defame a minister. Don't let it come out of your mouth, and don't let people come pushing that garbage in your ear. Hallelujah. Don't you be the garbage can for it. And we must not sympathize with someone who has bitter spirit, has a bitter spirit against a minister of the gospel. Don't sympathize with that. You're supposed to let them know that's the wrong spirit. Amen? Amen. 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 1 Timothy 5.19, against an elder, receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Do not receive an accusation against an elder, but before two or three witnesses. Amen? 
Amen. They got to come with some witnesses. Hallelujah. And then you still want to try it by the Spirit. Failure among God's anointed is not a new phenomenon. Samson fell. King Saul fell. King David fell. King Solomon fell. Even Judas fell. However, each man had been called and anointed of God to a specific position of leadership. In each case, these leaders either repented and accepted restoration or God ultimately removed them from their place of authority. King Saul was king for 40 years, anointed for two, and he was king without the anointing for 38 years. My God. Mm. Fired. (laughs) Amen. He got fired after two years, still in place, ain't had no anointing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you know only the anointing destroy the yokes. You need the anointing. The spirit of love of the Lord is upon me, and he has anointed me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And David knew to pray, Lord, don't take that, your Holy Spirit away from me, because he knew the Holy Spirit, what, the anointing. Amen? Amen? Amen. And don't let nobody disrespect your anointing, because you know the anointing comes from the spirit. Don't let them disrespect that. Talk talk any kind of way in front of you. Listen, you command the atmosphere, amen? Not in my heavenly. I host the presence of God. I know it, amen? So you're not going to curse in front of me. You're not going to get, I don't want to know you after the flesh, and I don't want you to know me after the flesh, amen? Let's just stay in the spirit, amen? Amen. That's why as a leader, I don't stay in places too long because before you know it, people start letting down their hair and they be talking about things that we ain't got no business talking about. Amen? Amen. Amen. It is God alone who calls people into positions of authority, and it is God alone who removes them from those positions. God sets them in place, and God takes them down. Even though he fires Saul, so he Saul was not taken down for thirty eight years later. Still king, no anointing. First Chronicles sixteen twenty two says, "Touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm." Amen. And I'm here to tell you that this does not only apply to leaders. Leaders have to be mindful. Amen. Um, I love this scripture, but you have to be mindful because the Holy Spirit is in the saints and they are the anointed. Amen. So we want to be mindful not to murder people with our mouths, not to put, not to murder their character and defame them. Amen. We want to be mindful, you know, to love on our sisters and brothers. Be mindful of carnal conversation. Amen. Amen. When leaders fell, it is the responsibility of God and the higher ministers to remove them from their positions of authority. Amen. Yes, you do have a right to ask a question. Be mindful how you come. Amen. Hallelujah. The purpose of the ministry. Amen. The purpose of the ministry. Ephesians 4, 11 through 14. You can pull it up. We're almost done. Ephesians 4, 11 through 14. This is the purpose of the ministry. The ministry is, when we refer to the ministry, we're speaking about the fivefold ministry. Mm Mm-hmm. It says, and he gave some apostles, he, and he gave some prophets. It says some, everybody not apostle, everybody not a prophet. And he gave some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting, equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And these gifts will remain till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So these gifts are set in place. This is the ministry. Everybody can't teach the church, but everyone can minister to the sin sick, dying world. The commission was given to every believer to preach the gospel to the sin sick, dying world, but everybody can't teach the church. The ministry can teach the church. Why? Because it says here, for the edifying of the body, to edify the body, right? for the perfecting mm-hmm. and equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. This is what we're doing now. The apostle gifting is edifying you and equipping you, amen, for the work of the ministry, amen, that you may mature. Hallelujah. 
Amen. That we may come in unity of the faith, the faith of the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The purpose of the fivefold ministry is to perfect or equip the church, the saints, so that they are better able to fulfill the life of service to which they have been called. You have been called to a service. You ought to be working. We don't have no bench warmers in the body of Christ. Ain't nobody sitting on the sidelines. Amen. Amen. There's no one taking up the wall. It ain't that kind of party. This is a working party. Amen? Amen. 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 This was the Apostle Paul's desire as he instructed Timothy concerning the purpose of the ministry. 2 Timothy 3.17 says that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen? And, and, and this was the reason for the ministry that the man of God can be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Amen. And the good works is the works of Christ. The fivefold ministry teaches, trains, rebukes, and exhorts the church that it might be furnished and equipped to engage in pro- productive ministry of good works. Amen. Listen, you have not begun to work until you are bringing in souls. You have not begun to work until you yourself is being a witness unto conversion. You yourself have not begun to work until you have been a witness unto conversion, and that soul, too, is being a witness. A person is not totally converted until they could be a witness unto Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 The goal of the saints, Ephesians 4, 11 through 14, and he gave some apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, whereas the primary objective of the fivefold ministry of the fivefold ministry is to equip the church. The primary objective of the church is to edify the body of Christ. Amen. The word edifying is translated from the Greek word okodom which means the build up, increase in structure or architect. Amen. The saints, these are the goal of the saints. The church's purpose is to increase itself and to its structure and build itself in size. The amplified versions of Ephesians 12 more clearly reveals this concept. His intention was the perfecting and the full equipping of the saints, his consecrated people that they should do the work of ministering toward the building up of Christ's body, the church. So how do you build up the body? You be a witness. How do you build up the body? You be a witness that you can, that God can add to the body. Amen? Amen. We just sent out some disciple sheets last week, I believe it was. We handed them out in service. Check your emails. We want to know, are you being a witness? Are you reading the word of God? Have you invited anyone to the service? Amen. Was anyone converted at your witness? Those are weekly exercises. We want them back every week. Hallelujah. This Amen. means you've got to be doing something because I'm accountable unto God. What are you doing? Did you send them? Are they doing the work? Amen. 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 Paul complimented the house of Stephanus a notable saint in the country of Achaia in Europe, because as saints they had um, addicted themselves to their ministry. 1 Corinthians 16, 15 says, I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is um, first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Listen, God said he'd rather you be hot or cold, not lukewarm. Amen. Get on fire for God. Be a witness. Amen. Add to the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Through your witness. What the ministry equips the saints and the saints addict themselves to build up the body of Christ, the kingdom of God is truly edified. Amen. Ephesians 4.16 says, the whole body fitly joined together, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Beloved, we ought to do it in the spirit of love. Amen? Amen. When the fivefold ministry and the saints of God work together as God has ordained, 
the church moves forward as the most powerful force in the world. But this power cannot be achieved unless the church submits itself to God's authority, structure, and his ordained chain of command. I tell you, where there is no order and rank, there is no protocol. Where there is no protocol, the power of God is, 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 is diminished. Amen? Only when we submit to God, his will, and his leaders do we find fulfillment and success in our personal lives and ministries as we seek to edify and build up the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen, Amen, beloved. Amen. That's the study today. Amen. Do anyone um, have any questions concerning what was shared so far? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, we bless you, and we praise your holy name, O God. We thank you for your word and your instruction, my God, concerning what the ministry responsibility is to the saints and the saints' responsibility to the ministry, O God. Lord, we ask that this word be embedded in the heart of the people, my God, that they will not that we will not sin against you, O God. In the name of Jesus, by the blood, we give you all the glory, all the praise, that the word that was planted today, my God, that it shall come forth and bring forth good fruit in Jesus' name. Lord, compel us to be a witness unto the conversion of the soul. In the name of Jesus, and we give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor. Amen? Amen. 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 Beloved, you will be receiving an email concerning... You will receive an email concerning this lesson. Amen. The email will be a home, another homework assignment based on what was taught. I pray that you took good notes. Amen. After I received the homework assignment back, amen, I will give you the um, handout with your homework assignment back that you can have for your own records. Those of you that have taken this course on our pastors and our leaders and passed the test and have handed in all the homework that was given, we are going to give you a certificate. The reason why we're giving you a certificate, because it says that you have been taught the right way concerning how to esteem and reverence your leaders and what your duties are to the work of the ministry and your leaders and your leaders' duty to you. Amen. This is a teaching moment. We can, you cannot expect for your children to do what you have not taught them to do. No sense in yelling and screaming. You didn't teach them nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you don't teach them, they will embarrass you in public. You will get embarrassed. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so you got to teach them. We're going to teach you because I don't plan on being embarrassed and while you're out there, you're not just in representation of yourself. You're in representation of God in your leadership in the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 So, beloved, as we move forth in this session, and um, today, Sister Marlena, you are going to do the altar call at the end, and I'm going to ask that you pray us out. Amen. I told you all before, pay attention to how the altar call is given. Study the scriptures for yourself that you would know how to invite someone to Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, amen. And you will be called on soon. So do the due diligence. Amen. So, beloved, I would like to hear from you now. What did the Holy Spirit, amen, um, give you, amen, in this teaching today? Uh, we're going to start with Sister Frances. Uh, praise the Lord. Um... Praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. Uh, Basically, um, the Lord was teaching us um, as far as overseers uh, to protect the flock and that they're responsible to feed themselves the word of God and that way they can feed the flock. They must eat the word. They must spend their time in prayer and um they can't be so busy, you know, um, that they don't give attention to the word and in prayer so that way they can receive and then they're able to uh, feed the flock. They are responsible, you know. Um, Amen. So that the flock is taught the word of God. Um, also... Um, we're responsible, you know, to 
take in the word and to be obedient. And um, what stuck out with me also is our mouth. We have to watch as far as what we say, you know, uh, concerning leaders, you know, because you hear a lot. And this day and age, everybody, they're, they're talking about what's going on. You know, I remember you saying in one of the lessons, and I've seen it when I was on Facebook at one time, how people, as soon as something went wrong with leadership, they were just blasting it on Facebook and blasting it and tweeting it and, you know, saying their little comments of what they think and what they feel instead of uh, taking it before the Lord in prayer. You know, I, we have to watch what we say, just like you pointed out about Saul. Saul reigned and was anointed for two years, but for 38 years he was still in position even though he was fired. But nevertheless, David, he Amen. respected him. When even though he he wasn't correct, David didn't put his hands on him. He didn't speak against him. You know, he didn't try to take him out of position, out of place. He respected. And then what scripture comes to me also, how Jesus, how he didn't um, treat Judas any differently, in spite of Amen. You know, what he was called to do in the earth. And that scripture always sticks with me as well. You know, G- Judas you know, betrayed Christ, but nevertheless, he called him friend. You know, he still allowed him to, to, to eat the supper with them. He was still there in the company of the apostles. So we have Amen. to say about leadership. And even towards one another, what I like what you said about the, um, the anointed. It says, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. A lot of times you hear that scripture from leadership, and they're talking for themselves. But you point Amen. out, which I love, that we are all, you know, those that are walking and doing the will of God, we are anointed as well. So we have to be careful what we say up to one another, you know, Amen. to the sister right next to us or to the brother. We have to be careful how we treat each other. So I thank God for the lesson. Um, that was some of the things that stuck out to me tonight. Amen. Amen. Yes. So we thank God truly for that shared through um, Sister Francis. It was really good, very good key points. And I pray that those of you that are listening or that will listen to the recording, that it too blessed you, Minister Howell. I want to hear what the Holy Spirit has given you. Amen. Um, I come in agreement with Sister Francis um, pretty much to piggyback on what she said that, um, the ministry, the church belongs to God and was purchased in, in his blood by his son, Jesus Christ, and that we are all are workers. We are all workers in the vineyard. The responsibility of the apostle is to oversee over us and to protect us. And our responsibility to the ministry is to come to work. We have to come to work. We can't just come there and just be idle. Um, but we come to work. This thing is real. This is not joining a social club or anything, but this is the work of God, and we are the laborers, and we have to labor in that vineyard, um, and we have the responsibilities, and if we're out of line, I expect to be chastised, because even as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. If our kids is out of line, we don't let them just run them up. We, sometimes we chastise them. My father used to say, where you show out, you get toe out, but sometimes um, when we get rebuked, we don't like it, but we are still supposed Amen. to take it. We, we, we got to take heed to um, the task that is not to hurt us, but is to, to perfect us, to edify us, to mature us. And um, we're not to rebuke it because when we rebuke that, then we are not rebuking the person who who is giving it to us in the natural, but we're rebuking and we're in a, a rebellion from what God has put in order, who he has put in order, and how things ought to be uh, ran. Um, also, um, it says, try the spirit by the spirit. And sometimes we may, be new, we may be new to uh, coming to Christ, and we may not know all the scriptures, but we know, we know certain things, like if people are uh, telling you to fight, 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 fight. In the natural, you know, God is not, He's, a, he's, he's peace. 
he's 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 the whole world shalom, you know, he's peace. So, you know, we gotta but we have to be led by the Holy Ghost that's inside of us. You know, if it's if, Amen. if causes confusion, we know that's not of God. If you're teaching stuff that causes confusion and, and we know what it feels like to be confused, that ain't right. Then we know that's not of God. Amen. So we you know, it's, it's little things that we have to be tuned, fine tuned into. You don't have to know uh all the scriptures and all that, but you know, you know, your own surroundings and your own inside that tells you certain things. Even that God has given us that that we can relate to to help us as we mature and as we are being groomed and as we are being trained up and raised up and um um what else? And that we're not to be contentious between one another and um no envy and strife and all of that and being jealous and to really uh we are brothers keepers but be mindful that we also need to mind our own business and work out our own self salvation. We need to work on us before we start to condemn anybody and, and, and that mouth is very powerful and you will be mm-hmm. you will be held accountable for every idle word that you say. So it's true that if you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing. So, you know, little things like that we ought to be mindful of and how we are to uh, come to communicate with our leaders and all and all of that. We might not agree with certain things, but we still have to um, reverence our leaders because Amen. they are the ones that are held accountable for us and what we were trained. You know, you can't just put us out. We're being, we're being chastised for a reason, not for an emotion, but for a reason. It's to, you know, stop us from doing stuff that potentially might hurt us or even kill us along the way if we don't stop. Because sometimes we can't see, and that's what that, that leader is there for, to protect us, you know, and say, you know, you don't see what I see, but you're going the wrong way. And so we are not to Amen. really, we are not really to really to kick up against them because it's not the person in place that we're rejecting, but we are rejecting God. Amen. And, um, Amen. Yeah, and 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 it's not just a, it's not just a thing, but it's a commandment. It's a commandment not to despise the chastisement of God. So that really stuck out. It's it's a commandment that we are not to, that um, we're not to uh, despise that. You know, and then the purpose of the ministry. What what is this? This is not like a ball club or or, or a bridge club. But the purpose, it has a purpose. It's for the perfecting of the church to, to equip us to do better, to, to work out, you know, to bring souls in, to be equipped to go out to bring souls in. It ain't about you. We ain't come here to Amen. Out. We ain't come here to look at you. Um, but we want to be qualified when we go out there because people are going to test you as to what you know and how you live in how you live in your life, so they're watching you because you might be the only God that they see. They they might not open up a Bible or come to, to church. So you are their temple that they are watching. And so, um, you know, that's what, it's, that's what it's about. It's for the edifying of the body, the work of the ministry, to build up the body, to bring them souls in, to b- bring them in. You may not think people will be watching you, but they're watching you. They're watching Amen. you. Amen. And they might, you know, um, they might not um, ever see a, the inside of a church until they start seeing you. And then they say, what must I do to live that life? That that person right there is so peaceable. That person is living that life that I want to live. I'm tired of this confusion. I'm tired of all this strife. I'm tired of being downtrodden. Every time I see that person, they're up. They're bold. They're bold to come and say, uh, you know Jesus, you know. Because after people snicker at you and you keep coming back, they're going to be like, I, I want some of that boldness. I want some of that boldness Amen. to proclaim Jesus. 
So um, we have to be mindful of our responsibility to this to the ministry, um, as well as the things that we don't understand, and we need to come to um, our leaders for anything. This is there still a respect that we need to come to them with, and, you know. You know, and sometimes it's not what you say, how it's how you say it and how we are to approach our leaders. And, um, you know, when we feel that, you know, we have a, 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 a ought, a disagreement, or we felt something is wrong, you know, it, we ain't all going to see the same pages. We all grew up in different times, in different households, in different neighborhoods, in different social, you know, things. And so... We might see things different, but it's still a way to come together to speak and be on one accord. So that's pretty much. Uh, Amen. We thank God for that share. There, that was a lot. Amen. And we thank God for it because it, listen, there's a lot that was shared today and a lot in the word. We we are there's we there's a responsibility that we have to the leaders and to the work of the ministry as well that they have unto us. And so we just want to do our due diligence and make sure that we do what it is that we supposed to do. But how would you know if we don't open up the word? So even to pass this part of your due diligence would be to continue to study the word. Amen. Sister Marlena, are you sharing tonight? Yes. Okay. I'm going to first start off with saying that I'm a work in progress, and God is dealing with me with submission. So as far as the, begin, as far as the beginning of the you know, prayer when you were saying that we had to ask you if we can go, you know, places we have to, you know. Um, so I felt like to me, because of my past experience, like when I was younger, I was in an abusive relationship, and I couldn't think for myself. So once I got out of that relationship, I just felt like nobody couldn't tell me anything. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm doing whatever I want to do. I don't care if 99 people said don't do it, I'm doing it because I want to do it. So God is dealing with me with submission, so I misinterpret love for control as control, but mm. it's really not control. So God is dealing me with that. So please be patient with me. I'm not trying to be with Amen. But this is new to me, and I want to be able to submit. But sometimes it's kind of hard for me because I feel like it's mm-hmm. like a spirit of control, and I know that you have my best interests at heart. Amen. Hallelujah. A God be loved woman of God. Yeah. Anything Amen. else? No, that's it. Okay, no, I do have Amen. one more. And you were saying, too, um, about don't, um, don't feed your natural man more, and God was dealing me with that today. Like, you see, he was saying, too, like, whatever you feed the most is going to be the strongest. So I mm-hmm. have to, you know, start feeding my spiritual man first. I mean, not Amen. first, but first and, and the most. And even, like, even by getting in the word, you know, feeding my, my spirit so that my spirit can be stronger. So, you know, by reading God's word, because I want God – and I always ask God to um, to give me a spirit of discernment to, you know, to increase it. And God is letting me know how to do that is to being in his word and praying. That's how my uh, spirit Amen. of discernment will be sharp because I say, Lord, just show me who's who. And when you show me who's who, give me the, spirit, give me the strength to be able to handle what you show me. So that's what I have to do. Um, and also you were saying correction doesn't feel good. And it really doesn't. But I'm the type Amen. of person that um, even when I was in the world, I always wanted people to tell me the truth, even though it hurt it, because the truth hurts, but it helps. So if, if you see me out of line, and I know you don't have a problem with that because you're going to cur- check me anyway, but, you know, and I, and I take it as love. So that's all I have to Amen. say. Amen. I just thank you so much for the Amen. 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 You know, I, I love that share because um, she got naked. Amen. And Amen. sometimes we have to get transparent and learn that we can be naked and unashamed before God. And the first step to change is to be able to identify what needs to be changed. You know, Amen. if we flow in self-deception and can't face it. And so she Amen. got real. She got, she, you know, she got real here. Amen. So we thank Amen. God for the woman of God bringing it to the light. We receive you, woman of God. Amen. We receive you Amen. and we work it with you. Amen. 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 And, and, and it's, listen, I'm going to tell you, the word of God brings about a change. Even those yes. of you that desire to be married, the word of God says that 
spirit of submission that you are submitting to your husband as yeah. Christ has submitted, as you submitted to Christ. Amen? And so if you, when you learn that submission, it prepares you for the covenant and relationships to come. Amen? Whether Amen. it is friendship, whether it is um, a marriage, whether it is between your leaders and yourself. And so I thank God for the, um, for the transparency. Amen. Bless Amen. you, woman of God. Amen. 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 And we will be praying for you concerning those things as well. Thank Amen. You. Um, you. Sister Amanda, um, we thank, we praise God for Sister Amanda. She received Amen. the Holy Ghost and fire on Sunday. Amen. It was her new birth date. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You sharing, Sister Amanda? Um, yes, I'll share. Um, what I have learned tonight is um, is great to me because I'm new on some of the things that, you know, I've not never taken into heart and consideration. But um, I've learned that, you know, as we, as we grow, we can be leaders. And as we look upon our leaders right now, Whatever they're doing and sacrificing for us is like what Jesus did, sacrifice himself for us. And, Amen. Uh, in this way, we know that we need to follow the steps of the leader. We need to obey. We need to respect. And um, I like when you say, you know, he is like we, we married to Jesus. we got to love him, which we do because he loves us. He gives us everything we ask for. And the way we ask for it, it has been given. Um, I mean, we cannot get that from any man because uh, Jesus is our Father. He's our giver, our healer, the miraculous God for us. He does Amen. everything for us. And um, the way we grow and the way we follow our leaders, our children would follow us too, and our grandkids would follow us too. And um, that would be healing for, you know, from stage to stage, step to step, uh, like we will see, mm-hmm. uh, beginning to end in, and the first and the last. And um, I'm thankful. I've learned so much tonight, and um, it's, a, it's a very good cycle. And I've encouraged people at my job. I've encouraged people Amen. that I've seen that's going through a lot, and, um, you know, they do talk to me about their kids, about certain things in their life, and I've encouraged them. I spoke to them about coming to the church, and I told them about Cornerstone, yeah, and I told them, I said, whenever you're ready, you come with me, you know, I'll take you there. It's like a new beginning in life. The words you hear is like, and the words you learn, and the things you've taught, and the things they've taught you is like... You know, it's like you start a new, like I'm saying, it's a new birthday for me. um, Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. CSCC, let's welcome Sister Amanda to the CSCC family. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Sister Amanda, that was truly a good share, and I'm glad that even with your new birth that you are compelled to be a witness. Amen, because, you know, being that witness is so important. And I myself used to say that we're parents by trial and error, that there's no 101 parenting book. But when I've learned how the Holy Ghost parented me and parent me through leaders and how I parent those that he's drawing, my spiritual sons and daughters, I know that parenting one-on-one is in the Word of God. You know, it's through that relationship that you have with God, how he loves you, how he's patient with you, how he's faithful to forgive you, uplift you, edify you, and how he forgives you, how he gives you chance after chance after chance to repent and get it right and to grow to the point where you're not living life like that anymore. And I believe that that's the type of love and patience that we need toward our children and the type of understanding. Amen? Amen. 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 So I, all the shares was good tonight. I truly enjoyed the revelation that came through you all because you too have something to offer and something to give. Amen. I want to salute my husband, Bishop, our Bishop. Amen. Isaac Walter heard in his absence from the Bible study. I thank God for the man of God and just want to bless God for him. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to release the line now to Sister Marlena. She will be the last voice that you hear to do the altar call and the closeout prayer. Okay. Okay, I'm going to do the altar prayer. Okay, the altar call. Okay, repeat after me if you guys are on the line, if you're not saved. Um, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I need you in my life. I am a sinner. I need you in my life. Forgive me my sins, Lord. Forgive forgive me for my sins. Make me a new person. Make me a new person. person. Today I have decided to follow you. Today I have decided to follow you. No turning back. No No turning back. From today. From From today. today. Forward ever. Forward ever. Forward Forward ever. Backward never. (laughs) Backward (laughs) never. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I'm going to just say a prayer. Oh, Father God, we come to you in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for the Bible study on tonight, Father God. Lord, thank please you, open up Hallelujah. our spirits, Father God, in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus, Father God. You, Let us get this word rooted and grounded into our spirits, Hallelujah, Lord, that we may not Jesus. sin against you, Father God. And teach us your ways, Lord. Teach us your word, God, in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, God, yeah. For Apostle Asia Heard, Father God, for giving out oh, the word. Oh, glory, today, God. Lord, we ask you to continue you know, open up our ears so we can hear what the Spirit is saying in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done, Lord. We thank you for the things that you're doing now, and we thank you for the things that are still yet to come. And Father yes, God, God, we ask you, Lord, to continue to bless each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Agape love. Amen. Agape love. Agape love. That was a God good closeout and a good um, prayer. Amen. Amen. Okay. amen.